Hello and what is going on guys, Tomcat here, and in today's video we are back in spin tires for probably my most ambitious hauling challenge yet. We have a Tatra 10x10 with a uh, evac trailer loaded up with a UA massive UAZ mud bogger, and our mission is to get this thing around this map and see what happens. Now, I've got this truck on its swamp setup with the wheels and tires, which is a little bit wider, a little bit lower, a little bit lower to the ground, but at the same time, like you can see, if we go back to the defaults, it's a little higher, but the swamp setup, I feel like it's going to work a little bit better for this map, because if you remember from the Chevy review, this is the spin map, which the spin map is intense. So, let's go ahead and get the trailer feet back up, and now that we're good to go, we can set off. Now, this thing is always... Uh, is always in all-wheel drive, full-time all-wheel drive, but we're gonna ha gonna go ahead and set the diff lock because we're probably gonna need it where we're going. And doesn't that just look absolutely epic? I mean, a truck like this, pulling a trailer with a vehicle like that on it, is just a sight to behold, frankly. I mean, you would not, you would not see this unless you were... God, I don't know, unless it was like... Unless you had a Tatra 10x10 as a tow rig for your mud truck, then maybe, but still. And that UAZ, we may even drive it later, I'm not sure, because that thing is... That thing is pretty wicked itself. But most of this video is probably going to be this thing pulling through the mud, but it's actually doing a really good job, considering how much weight it has behind it, and how heavy the truck is. And partly that's due to the fact that these tires have a really wide track width, and also partly that's because of the fact that we have 10-wheel drive. So, when you have 10-wheel drive, it's... Oh, God. That was a little bit of a hiccup in the transmission. The only thing we have to watch out for is any sharp changes in incline, because it could get the trailer hung up, which would really, really, really suck. And if we get the trailer hung up, I'm not sure what we're going to do, because if the trailer's hung up, then we're not going anywhere. We may be able to winch out of it, but we'll have to see. Oh, those lights are bright. Damn. Damn. Let's see what kind of interior view we got. Oh, yes! Look at that! Oh, man, that is legit. You actually, you can see inside the truck. That is really cool. I'm okay with that. That is pretty freaking awesome. Although, I do prefer the exterior view because you get to look at that. Oh, God. The UAZ shifted forward. That's unnerving. <laughs> the fact that just a, down, a little downhill like that shifted it forward is a little unnerving. We're in fifth gear now. Holy crap. Cruising along, nice little steady fourth gear pull. God, you could haul anything with this. I mean, you got a massive amount of room in there, four doors, and a, what looks like a huge sleeper in the back. I'm not sure if that's actually what. No, actually, no. You know why? Because that's where the engine is. Dang it! I've, I've, <laughs> I may have messed that up slightly, but it's okay. It gets a little iffy up there. I'm a little concerned about that, but we'll get to that when we get there. Or we'll cover that when we... We'll focus on it when we get there, I should say. And up to fourth gear again. This transmission, it, man, it's like... It it kind of decides what it wants to do and then just kind of does it. There's actually very little delay between shifts, which is pretty surprising considering the fact that we're in a massive truck that's got, like I said, a huge amount of weight to pull. Not just of itself, but of that trailer. And what's on that trailer. Can't forget about what's on that trailer. But really, it just digs in and goes. It doesn't complain. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't try to go in and out of gear all the time. It just goes. I'm going to try and avoid that big dip right there. Because if I can avoid that, the trailer will have a much better chance of not tipping. Or getting hung up, which is my main concern. I mean, if we have to winch, we'll winch, but still. Come on, there you go. Not bad. Not bad. Dude, you stick this thing in low two, and it will crawl anything. Or almost anything. Except when a trailer's getting hung up. Ooh, that's a little tippy. Let's try and avoid that. Head up the edge just a little bit. See if I can make the truck just kind of ride the edge. 
It's still kind of veering to the same direction, but it is making its oh god. Oh, that that's gone. Load's gone. Okay. Okay. Well. The evac trailer may have to actually be used for evac now. Well, no, not really. We're just going to back down the hill a little bit and see if we can pull that thing back onto its wheels. Alright, winch time. Oh, there is, like, no way you're flipping that over unless you've got, I don't know, a cliff to roll it down. I do not want to start over, though. I really don't want to start over. Actually. This gives me an idea. You remove the trailer real quick. And then... Take a winch to it. And now... Go around the side and see if this helps at all. Come on, flip over! That's literally doing everything to make it not flip over. This thing just has so much grip, it's like, just massive amounts of grip, constantly, too. Alright then, come on! I'm just gonna keep pulling it around until it flips back over, I've, I've, I've decided, I've just decided that that's what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna keep pulling this thing around until it flips back over. fact, what if we just headed back down the hill, but before heading back down the hill, well, I don't know if that would flip it over. No, don't change truck. Don't change truck. You change truck, you're in, you're in for a bad day. It's just so top heavy. Well, not even top heavy. It's just the fact that those tires are so huge that it can't flip over pretty much. Well, don't say can't flip over because we can always flip it over. And I've realized that I completely forgot to get fuel, so we're just going to go back anyway. We're just going to go back anyway. I mean, really. Let's see. First thing we're going to do... Let's get this thing, rescue it, and move it, because if we spawn these two on top of each other, that's going to be a horrible day. Let's go back, attach to the trailer, and then rescue. Alright, let's see, advanced. Move closer. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Alright. Tell you what. Yes. Actually, it's probably a good thing the trailer didn't come back with us because that would have sucked. That would have been horrible, actually. So, and let's see, in the first, like, almost 10 minutes of this challenge, we've made a bit of progress, and then gotten put all the way back to where we started again. That kind of sucks. Advanced. Ramps down. I'm not even going to set the trailer feet, because I don't really care. I feel like it's fine without it, though, too. It's just, like, such a stable truck and a stable trailer that we probably don't need it. We'll find out in a second, though. This thing is like the most roly-poly vehicle I have ever driven in, in spin tires. 
Oh my god. It just wants to flip itself over half the time. And on a side note, I've noticed we have a bit of a fuel dilemma. And that fuel dilemma, honestly, could make things a little difficult for us. Let's see. Advanced. Bring the ramps up. Good to go. And parking brake off. <laughs> it's always that one thing. And that's usually that one thing is usually the parking brake. Now, let's try to make it past where we got stuck last time. And we could pick it up again in a later episode. But... What we'll probably end up doing is we'll probably end up bringing this truck fuel with another truck because I feel like that's going to be the simplest approach. And you know what? Since, um, since we're pretty much just driving the same road, to make things interesting, we're going to go ahead and hit a couple Instagram shoutouts because I think you guys are awesome and you guys deserve it. Let's see. We've got, um, well, <laughs> Riley, a bunch of underscores pool. He's pretty much liked, like, he's blowing up my feed right now. He's like, it's crazy. Let's see. Um, Josie, E E E uh, dot O one. Let's see. Dennis underscore da underscore boss. Uh, let's see. I am Jip 386. What else? Or who else, I should say? Euros underscore TC. TC. Uh, let's see. Car lover 477. Mm, twin underscore turbo underscore 455. And Caden underscore Clary. So that will be some Instagram shout outs for you guys. And some of you guys ask me, like, oh, why do you do Instagram shout outs? I do them because I literally feel like it's a way to be grateful to you guys and, and really just kind of shout you guys out and be like, hey, I. I I look at your, I, I look at the feed, I look, I look at the feed, I look at the, the feedback, I look at, you know, what, you, how you guys are interacting on my channel and on my Instagram and on my social channels. So, it's kind of a shout out to you guys and a thank you to you guys. And interior view, not for long. We stick it in high, I wonder if it'll just go or spin. To be honest, it's doing a pretty good job of going. I mean, sure, it's spinning, but we're already back to where we left the last trailer. So, I consider that a win, ladies and gentlemen. God, why? I, I, can you even imagine driving this thing on the road? Like, how would that look, literally? Like, you're pulling up, you know, you're going along the highway, going about your business, and then this pulls up. And it's just like, get out of the way. I am the god of hellfire. Well, not really, but you could be. In this thing, you could be. Having two of these trailers on screen at once is dropping frames a little bit. That sucks. Get away from it. I want my frame rate back. No! Come on! Come on! Give me some grip! Like, frames are at 48. 48. 48. 46? No, 41. What? Oh, come on! What are you doing? No! There we go. Frames are somewhat back. Alright, come on. Actually, no. You know what? We're not gonna do the same stupid crap we did last time. Because that caused... Horrible results. That literally caused horrible results. So... We're gonna see... If we can do something a bit different. But the only problem... The only problem, though, is that we risk high-centering the trailer. And if we high center that trailer, that is like, that's deep crap. It really is. 
Come on, UAZ, stay up there. Stay up there, Mudbogger. I am trying so hard right now to keep that trailer centered so much that we're basically tripoding this truck. Crap, that trailer is beached. That's what winches are for. Break off. Pull. Nice thing about this truck, too, is that it's got rear steer. And on trucks that have rear steer, I mean, you really have so many options on how you can handle, uh, like, your turning radius and stuff like that. Dude, if you got rear steer, bruh. Like, bruh, you're going anywhere. You really are. Just go slowly. Very slowly. And attempt. I say it. <gasps> no, you don't. No. Bloody hell. Well, that sucks. That is a fail. That episode is literally a let's fail. Well, I... <laughs> If you guys enjoyed this episode of failing, then don't forget to click that like button. Tell me in the comment section down below if you guys thought of it. And if you're new to my channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more daily videos like this one every day in your inbox. And I will see you guys in the next one. Talk to you guys later and hope you guys enjoyed.